those white things are fish. They're all fish. The white things are, yeah. What's that likely to be? Perch and pike? Yeah, uh, perch, roach, green, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Marks in the bottom. It could be a mooring. Oh, I see. Yeah. Just where the chain's scraped along. Yeah. most successful one, that flasher. I'll get that underwater so you can see it in a minute. So just line around there for times. For the fans. Walking right there, you can see it. Oh, I've got it now, yeah. Okay. I'm going to drop it down to the fishing. Yeah, go for it. First time I used the fish finder, I managed to trawl all day, not get snagged, not lose any lures, not run aground. Just it was a much more straightforward day, yeah, just much easier. So, but then when you go on these ones here, you go into all the stuff they've got, you know. Uh, side vision, uh, down vision and all that kind of stuff, but uh, I just tend to stick to these, these pictures here because it suits me for seeing the down rigger, seeing the bait. If I see fish, I could drop the cannonball down to it. Uh, they're all fish, with marks. They're all fish? They're fish, yeah. Uh, that's a big group of fish, bait fish. That's the individual fish. What's the individual fish? That's the individual fish there. That's a group of bait fish. That would be a group of bait fish as well. So the colour's the density? Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. There's more fish there just off the bottom as well. See that doesn't screw the cannonball. That one does, that one doesn't. Because that's, uh, that's like a pinpoint beam it gives you. So it doesn't pick up the cannonball. It's like a floodlight. That will show it. I see. The difference between a spotlight and a floodlight. The deeper it is, the bigger it gets. Right. It's like you getting a torch and putting a torch down there and then lifting it up. As you lift it up, you're going to cover more of the bottom. So just like that. Oh. In 30 feet, you'll be seeing about 10 feet of the bottom. 30 feet of water, seeing about 10 feet. Ah, fish, come on. You can mark that and then come back next week and it's not there, that proves it's a bait ball. You don't get trees wandering about the lot. 26 feet is too deep to be weed. Okay. That's, that's the, the side view one, so actually seeing that shoal of fish that we passed there. That's in line just off the bottom. For me, the main bit benefits the mapping. I could turn that off instead of mapping because it's like having a street map with a lock. You know all the depths. You can buy charts, but the charts is just like a line of numbers showing you like 70, 60, 50, 40, 30 feet. That's giving you holes and lumps and bumps and everything like that. Um, this is much better. Yeah. And the lock is up and down and this changes as well. You can, you can adjust it to, check, to take in that, that effect. You see where this thing pays off when you get along that shore? See that cloud of shoreline? That's full of lumps and bumps and holes. That's been made by... Well, here we've got another bit here coming up. See, we've got that. That's 12 feet. So now I'm at 35 just now. I'm going to wind this up. Well, 
20. But I can keep on going in until I say to get to about 25. And that just goes straight up with that, you know. You see the angles going up at just now. And that's you in the wide bits, wait till you get to those bits. So I turn this round. You should avoid getting snagged. Cannonballs at 20, which is there. 22, 20. 16, 14. 17. He says, how sharp the drop off is. You actually crossed into that, you can see it. You crossed into that. Yeah. But the lures would have been behind you, so they would still be. I checked them anyway. Yeah. I hate dragging bunches of weed about. Yeah. Every time I do check them, I find there's no weed and you shouldn't have checked them. They end up getting tangled. So, <laughs> but I'll check them anyway. So, um, but. It's fine. The bait's fine anyway, so. Check this. I'm going to check the wall. Make sure. That's why I don't like coming out in rough weather. You can't do all this. You're having to concentrate trying to stand up, stay alive, and boats getting blown all over the place. You let go of it and you're everywhere, so this is why it's all like the calm weather. this down here. So talk me through that, what's on there? Uh, it's a fish at um, bait head mount. You just put the fish into it, secure it with a couple of cocktail sticks and it swims just like a real fish. Absolutely brilliant. Quick to load. It's great. You get them in two different sizes. That's the big size with about a seven inch mackerel in it. So to put it out, get a fish to get it now. Right, so the way that rod's pulsing, see with that dead bait mount. Because you see that fish swimming like that, you see the rod pulsing as well. See the rod's wobbling, the same sort of effect. I think the water that shows you uh, how fish spin and grab the bait, sometimes you get a, you know, how the hell does that fish Get off that, you see it because then grabs it from the back and hangs on to it from the back and hooks it over near the back, or it might, might come in and snap something from the tail. So it's um, it's, it's good for that, just, just showing you how fish grab things and how many fish come up, follow a thing for a good while, take a look at it, swim away, maybe just mouth the bait, you don't even see it getting mouth. So it's, the water is just very good for that. Uh, Sometimes you don't know. I've had one where I just saw the rod go one bang, just one hit. But the fish um, has got a hold of the bait, grabs it from the back, uh, and hangs on to it for over a minute. So, if I hadn't seen that fish go, I'd have been still trawling about, uh, dragging a dead a fish's head, and that was it. 50 pound braid, 30 pound mono on both downriggers, just because they take a lot of abuse from rubber bands and them having to pull them to, to um, uh, release them and stuff like that. 
there. And there's a wacky big cannonball right in front of the thing. So the fish isn't going to be shy. Yeah. I'm going to do jigging. I'm going to use... Um, Say that again. Jig, jigging or drop shotting. I'm going to use that. Because you can see structure and stuff. If there's a tree down there, you'd see a tree shape. Um, you get a lot more fine detail with that. But um, you know, for me, for uh, open water fishing, where I want to see lots of things, I want to see the bottom coming up, um, I prefer the standard fish finder view. That's uh, you get the side vision as well. Uh, that's okay, but that's actually getting the water depth. The minute you go to deeper water, that bit comes wider. Um, there's that fish there, this fish there is sitting off the bottom. But we show we group of fish. So some guys can work out there's another group of fish there. Um, yeah. It depends on, on the method you're using, what you like. I suppose if you're sea fishing and you're coming up to wrecks and stuff out on reefs, you'll be able to see things like that. It's, it's good for that. There's a fish just on the surface there as well. Just actually splashed here. There's another fish splash over there. This shoreline's like a staircase that goes down like that, but then it shallows up in there as well. So it's a lot of this stuff was all this whole bottom of the lockout so when the glaciers carved out the lock, it pushed all the debris down, so it's just all you know um boulder fields and everything. So it's all up and down, up and down, up and down. Yeah, there's a bit there. See over by those trees over there? There's a bit there that goes from 20 feet to 6 feet in the length of the boat. It's like that. I've got it on here. I'll show, I'll show you it on here. I've got it on that one as well, I think. Um, I've got a skull and crossbones. You know, if something pops up, you've got a skull and crossbones on it, so you know not to go there. So, it might not be in that one. You have the pro mapping card in, it just says all the details right to the card. You don't have to go home and edit it. You did with that one, the old one, you have to put it into your computer, open up the software, save all the data, go back, save it back to the card, and then next week you find out what you've got or you haven't got. This one just does it as you go along. You know, what I'd do with the old one, I'd see that and I'd drive through it. And then I'd go back home and see whether I got all of it. That one, you drive through it and you can see if you haven't got it, you just turn back around, go over it again. So. Look how many more contours that gives you. See, that gives you loads of contour lines. That just gives you a few. So. There it is there. It's coming up just in here. So what's the benefit of having both of those? <sighs> Some bits of the lock I haven't mapped with this yet are on that. So it gives me an indication when I'm driving in uh, the depths. So it's just... Um, it's not a backup, it's really just information that's not on that will be on that and say after about another year. That's got about five years of data on it. I've only been using that for a year. There's dace in here as well, there's roach, there's chub, there's barbel, there's bream, there's trout, there's everything. Uh, 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 rough, there's tons of things in here. Uh, it could be powing as well up in the surface, there's loads of stuff. They're, they're quite unique to the lock of it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a herring. Uh, it's been landlocked since Ice Age. And uh, it's a freshwater herring. And uh, you just get them in the, sh in the lock. You see big shoals of them in the fish finder sometimes, or you get them up in the surface. The back's, back's breaking the water. What's the best catches in here, Jim? The heaviest fish is 14 pound 10. But someone else with me, he got one at 16, one of the guys in the shop. So. It's 33 inches long, I reckon it's 16. So I gave it 16. You're not better. <laughs> no, they're just fish. Right, there's a skull and crossbones there. I'm going to turn out at uh, that before again. So that, that's a nasty bit there. You see it marked on that one. I haven't put an icon on this one yet for it. So we're just turning away from that bit. Another good thing with these is that wee green line, the coastline where you're heading to. So you know you're heading away from there. I'm going to put it back to fish finder view. You can also save um, 
screenshots as well. If you want to take a picture of something that's interesting, you can do that. So. That's where I've been. That's all my tracks I've covered. It should really be secret knowledge, but anyway, that's it. <laughs> there we go. It's just filling in the map detail. That's areas I've mapped. That's area I've mapped. That's that bit I haven't done, so just driving through there, it just fills it all in. Do I have to go home, update it, find out what you've got? It's just all there. I could turn back around and go over that bit again, but I'll do that another day. You just it's a lot of fish, no? Yeah, aha. Uh -huh. 40 feet. Put something down to them. Go down to 35. So that's it going down just there. It could be big bream or I don't know. We'll find out. Well, that's banging. That other one still just this top line. That's that's 20 feet and that's uh, 35 feet. Oh, better bring us up. That near the bottom. I'm going to check it just to make sure. Yeah, we're just uh, you're dragging a bunch of weed about, a waste of a, a rod. It's fine. Heaviest sound from the lock was caught just along that bit there at the stables. Uh, 44 pound, I think it was. So we've got a down rigger set at 10 and 15. They don't have two at the same depth because if you come into a shallow, you can't wind two up at the same time. You have one at 10, you jump for the one that's deepest, wind that up, then do the other one. So. But you can see that rod's pulsing, that's where that spoon bounced about the slider. You know, it pulsing away. Sometimes you do it and the pulsing stops. You think, that rod should be pulsing. Then you find out there's a fish on it, which is just swimming along holding the bait. You just see the rod's not running right, so you think, there's something wrong with that. Something's got to smack that mackerel. It looks it's swimming, it's swimming away, something's got to come and hit it. Mackerel being okay, so I think you just have to put the bait in front of the fish. I don't think they're too fussy or whatever bait it is. Yeah. And is there a way of uh, making them last longer so they don't just disintegrate and fall off? Um, or is it just the fresh of the bait better? Fr fresh of the bait. Um, some baits are tough, like char are tough. They've got real, real, le real leathery, leathery skins. Uh, they're really tough. Um, dace, I find when I get dace in the fourth, get them early in the year and they just fall apart. Get them from now, September onwards, they're a lot tougher. So. Roach are good. Roach are got nice tough skins. So you got a wee trout from a hill lock or from a burn. It's years old, but it's very small. They're tough. So. These wee bait heads are good here because, uh, see I've got that captivated pin. Uh, he just stuck the bait in there, put the pin through, it's held in by part of the trace. So everything's all held in one go. It's a, it's a rotating bait head, you know, it rolls in an arc, but they work. Just get the fish, this one's are slightly too big for it, but it should still work. Let's it here. Pinch the bait head in, put that pin through the hole there, right through the fish's head, and it comes out over here somewhere. That's it, that's the fish held in. It's just hang, hang down the side. Right. So 
you know, you see the bottom, you know you're nowhere near the bottom. Uh, and with that, you can see the bottom coming up to meet you so you can get away from it. But uh, I'm at, I'm at um, 15, 15 and 10. The downriggers have a depth on them? Yeah, the depth counter on them, yeah. It's got a trolling ball up. Is that what this is? Yeah, that just means it lines out and uh, it's for jet skiers supposedly not to come around the back of your boat and cut your lines. But it doesn't work. It pops up to 19 feet. So this is full of holes and a wee hills and all that kind of stuff. So this way you have to watch all the rods, especially that one there. I don't know exactly what depth it's at. So I need to watch for that one. See, so this is coming to another shallow bit there. So I turn away from that. It's on that map. So. 16 is coming up again. So 14. Yeah, this bit here, if you look, it shows you that's 25 feet, that's 16 feet, that's 15 feet, that's 19. That's up and down, up and down, up and down like this. They're all over the place up here. So, um, You have to have your wits about you trolling this bit. You can't really go and do something else because all of a sudden you could be in 10 feet of water. Everyone's getting snagged. Yeah, so. and we're not going to, we're not telling moving fast. Well, so save the wind behind you and pushing you along. Oh. That's a fish. So, I'm going to bring the other rod in and we just kill the engine. This is when I'm glad I've only got four rods out, not six. Get those bags up, Craig. Those, those bags, just pull them in the boat so the fish doesn't run into them. Oh. Thank you. It might be a trout the way it was fighting, but we'll see. Because warm water pike fight really well. It's a pike. This is the eight foot six fly rod. We stripped down and made into a rod. I'll track him over here. Come on. Maybe about what? Eight pounds, something like that?
Just hooked on the outside of the mouth. Just going to unhook him out of the boat, okay? Just, would you want him in the boat for a picture or? Okay. I'll try and unhook him if I can. Come on, you. Oh, he's bigger than I thought. <laughs> there we go. I'll measure him. Anthem. 34 inches. Maybe about 10. Okay, so stick him back in. And you go. Let's get back in here again. First thing I did when the fish took, uh, I looked at the dam rigger, that was at nine feet, we're in 15 feet of water, so he knew it was a fish. That's a fish. There wasn't uh, the bottom end of that. Could have been a string log, but you know, it's, uh, that's unusual. So, right. The way it fought at the start, I thought it would have been a trout, just the, the chuck, bang, bang, banging, but you know, warm water pike do fight really hard. Pieces of foam in the rods, uh, so that if the rod falls in, it floats. Right, so fish it away. The fish takes and the rod starts banging like that. You see it bouncing. A big fish can do it, or a wee fish can do it. Maybe just banging away like that. Um, if it doesn't break the band, just lift the rod out, wind down to it, thumb on the spool, and just yank it like that, across the band. That's your fruit for fish. So, okay. That's why I got heavy line. Because you know I've got to do that. If you did that with say 15 pound line, you end up you break the line and you end up losing the fish. And so they're handy when you do get fishing, just swing everything out of the way and clear the decks. So Bad fish take, take when I'm doing this, soon I'm doing this, it just pulls the line free. I've had that a few times. I stick a waterproof in the down rig, I don't like having two out at the same time. Because if something, if something goes wrong, I don't know which one to grab first. One at a time. So. But that's Port Nell and that's where the record pipe was taken. Just in, in there. Uh, Tommy Morgan got it in 1947, I think it was. This thing here, if you want to film this, this thing here is called a retro ease. It brings a ca cannonball into your hand, so it's there. Rather than having to swing out here and get it, so you put it back out again. So It's 
45 feet for that one. Just because it's deep out here, I may as well try it. It's 20 feet that other one. You see that in lock on, it, it's, it shows a char. So I think that's, that's pound. And you see it in other fish finders as well. So what uh, sort of size is that? The show? However lot distance we're going, you know. I suppose you have to mark it back there and see how many hundred yards we're going. But, uh, yeah. There's bigger fish above them. Strange. The cannonballs above it and below it. There, and we've got one at 45 as well. 45 feet, so I'll have one. That, that's what, that'll be the 45 foot one down there. Right. So that's go through those bigger fish there. So um, we'll see if something's interested in it. There's also this wee, the way these uh, islands go, there's like wee humps, there's wee humps there as well. That crop to about 12 feet. It's not just a big deep channel. It goes down and there's a lump, and there's another lump, and then it goes down. What are your ideal conditions to be out in the lock? For me, the best conditions are just flat calm like this because I'm standing up, I've got a 10 to rods, um, I'm in deep water, I'm in open water as well, so just flat calm. It's the opposite of all salmon anglers, but I just like flat calm conditions. So it just, uh, just makes life a lot easier, you can steer better. You can control your speed a lot better. It just makes life simple. So, uh, but if you were to get a wind on the lock? For me, an easterly or a southerly, because that then doesn't make big waves. I don't like westerlies, because the time they come across the lock, it's like surf over there. I don't like northerlies, because they kill people. Um, yeah, easterly or a southerly. So. Just saw a flash and the rod just went and I realised there's a fight taking it. Don't know why something hasn't hit that. It to be a reasonable size to hit it right enough, but I don't know why something hasn't hit it. I'm only going to put it out to 60 feet because uh, I'll have it run a wee bit shallower this time. It's a needle in a haystack. It's like a three-dimensional game of battleships. You're just going about looking, trying to put your lure in front of that fish or your bait in front of that fish. So, and a lot of luck as well. So, te determination and luck, that's what you need. So, Chairman James's thoughts for the day. <laughs>